So let's go ahead and get started today. Um, this is our 60 minute restorative practice. Um, my apologies, there was a little bit of a glitch getting the links to the Zoom meeting out um, this evening, but hopefully everybody's got what they need. For today's practice, um, we're going to be using a bolster if you have it, two blocks if you have them, two or three pillows. You can make up for no bolster with pillows and no blocks with books. And then I've got a couple blankets and you might also like to have um, an eye pillow or something to place over the eyes. And we're going to start today um, in a seated posture with some meditation and pranayama or breath work. So I like to sit up uh, on something soft so that my hips are comfortable and I'm not putting too much pressure on the low back as I get started. You can bring the palms to rest comfort comfortably on the legs, lengthening the spine and really feeling rooted on whatever your support is today. Imagining a thread connecting the crown of the head up through the clouds. The spine gently lifts, the chin might gently tuck. Let's go ahead and close our eyes. Starting to tune in to the present moment. Drawing our awareness onto the mat, into the body, through the breath. We'll begin with a gentle guided scan of the body, observing how we're feeling this Sunday evening. Sun is setting, cool day in the winter. We might feel some soreness or tension or stiffness in the joints. And we'll do some gentle movements here to help with any stiffness. For now, we're just simply observing the body Noticing how you feel. Guide your awareness now to the breath. Noticing how your natural breathing feels today in this moment. Is the breath flowing smoothly? Are you feeling the sense of taking deep breaths? Or maybe the breath is shallow or staccato. Observing our point of beginning and now beginning to control the breathing with our awareness. We use this pranayam or breathing practice as a way to calm the mind by drawing it toward the breath. So whenever the mind begins to wander, we gently guide it back to our breath. Let's take our hands to our belly here and through the nose, take a deep inhale, drawing breath into the belly. Feel the belly expand. Exhale, sighing it out. Feel the belly drop toward the spine. Another breath like that. Deep, full breath into the belly. And then let it go. And then returning hands to a place that's comfortable. We'll continue these deep, full breaths, sending breath into the belly, exhaling through the nose. Let's inhale here to a count of four. Exhale, letting that go. 
Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Two, three, four. Exhale. Two, three, four. Inhale. Two, three, four. Exhale. Two, three, four. From here, we're going to guide the breath to elongate the exhales. We'll inhale, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhaling, two, three, four, exhaling, two, three, four, five, six. This breath, keep it up. The exhales are about two beats longer than the inhales. And we'll sit here for another minute or two. This is a breath of relaxation as the awareness elongates the exhales. And while we sit, practice our, practicing our pranayam, I'm going to read the Anusara invocation, which is chanted at the beginning of an Anusara practice. And I've chosen to read this today because I think it's meaningful um, and I think it's a great point of beginning for class. Om Namah Shivaya Gurave, Sachitananda Murtaye, Nisprapanchaya Shantaya, Niralambaya Tejase. And what this means is I bow to the presence of the divine light within, our true and highest teacher that lives in and around us as being, consciousness and bliss. It is ever present and radiates peace, lighting the way to transformation. So, so I'll invite you during today's practice to really meditate on the idea of the divine light within. This idea that each and every one of us has a good, pure and true nature inherent within us. And that if we can open our hearts and minds to this inner divinity within ourselves and within others, we'll find a way toward bliss. So with that in mind, let's release the arms down, taking a deep inhale, reaching out and up to the sky. Exhale, pressing the hands together, bringing them to the third eye, thinking of our inner light, bringing our hands to our heart, thinking again of the inner light in others, and then we'll release the hands down. Let's take some gentle rolls of the neck. Some slow, easy movements here, beginning our restorative practice. Circle the head in the other direction. If you notice any areas of tension as you're circling, you might slow down there and give yourself an extra moment. And then let's take some circles of the shoulders, just loosening up the joints, finding some openness here in the joints. Excellent. 
from here, we'll come down, removing any props under us. We'll slowly lower down to our back. Moving gently, slowly, keeping the body warm, keeping the nervous system calm and still. You might dim the lights in the room or place a covering over your eyes. From here, set the feet wide on the mat, planted firmly down. Let the arms fall open by your sides. Lengthening the spine against the mat, just feeling the support of the earth. And then let's let the knees begin to gently rock side to side. Bringing movement into the hips. I like to prepare for the longer supported restorative poses with a gentle warm up so that we don't have any stiffness as we go into those longer poses where we ask the body to fully relax and release. From here, let's bring the feet closer to the bum and find a pillow. We're going to bring the pillow between the two knees and set another pillow on the mat or on the ground to the left of your knees. From here, we'll let the knees gently fall to the left, coming into an easy supported spinal twist. Now make sure that your legs feel completely supported here. And then we'll bring the shoulders flat onto the ground and you can open the arms into a T shape. So I'm noticing that my foot feels like it <laughs> is holding itself up and really, what I'd like for you to feel is completely supported. So I'm taking another pillow and placing it under the foot here. And then if a T shape for the arms doesn't feel comfortable, you can also make a cactus shape. Another nice way to support yourself in this twist is to place a block or a rolled blanket behind the lifted hip. So in this case, behind the right hip. Relaxing here, gently closing the eyes. Notice the skull, letting it feel heavy and supported by the earth. Drawing awareness down into the neck. Our neck, which does so much for us every day. You might gently lift the chin a little bit or rock the head side to side, just exploring gentle and small movements. And then maybe you find some stillness, bringing awareness now into the shoulders letting them feel heavy and supported by the earth. Notice a gentle sensation of opening across the breastbone, the sternum, the front of the shoulders and arms. Arms are open wide and the hands are feeling relaxed. Drawing awareness down into the spine, making sure the spine feels completely supported by your pillows, your blocks, and the earth. In restorative practice, we really want the body to find full release and relaxation. So if you feel anywhere where you're holding tension or holding the muscles up, see if you can adjust your props, adjust your posture so that you can find total ease. 
we give ourselves this gift of a restorative practice to rejuvenate the body, the physical body, and also to make space for the mind. Finding calm. Returning to that breath. Full breath into the belly. Slow, elongated exhales. Drawing awareness down through the hips and the legs. Noticing the sensations of those points of support where the body comes in contact with other materials and also where the body comes in contact with the body. Noticing physical sensations, textures, softness or hardness of the props and the earth. Maybe even noticing the temperature of the air on your skin. Sending awareness down through the legs and into the feet. Letting them relax. Let's take four more breaths here. Maybe you can envision that inner light, your inner wisdom. From here, we're going to gently and slowly transition to a spinal twist on the other side. You'll remove the block from behind your hip, or if you had books there or a bolster, remove that and just move it to the other side of the mat. Keeping the head down on the mat, we'll lift the knees, pillow between the knees, and then move your other pillow to the right side. Pausing for a moment here at center, Gently tucking the spine and pressing low back into the mat. And then letting the knees fall to the right onto your support. Taking the time here to make sure the feet and leg, legs are fully supported with props or the earth. Again, placing a block, bolster, or even a rolled blanket behind the left hip so that there's no, um, you're not using any uh, energy of the muscles to hold yourself in this posture. So getting settled in, you might return to a T-shape for the arms, letting the shoulder blades really soften and relax into the earth. Eyes gently closed. Noticing again the skull feeling heavy. And you might notice any differences in the way it feels to twist on this side of the body versus the other. The two sides of the body function differently in each of us. And so they develop differently and we often notice those things, those differences. In our yoga practice, we hold each posture for equal time, an equal depth of pose on each side. And this practice helps to teach the body 
how it feels to come into alignment, to minimize the differences from one side to the next, and to avoid perpetuating imbalances in the body. From here, you might gently rock the head side to side, if that feels good. Finding some stillness. Relaxing the muscles of the face. You might even tense them up and then release them just as a way to really let go. We rarely notice tension in the face, but our face is really the method of communication of so much. And so we can often hold tension in the face as we move through our daily lives. It's nice to take an opportunity to relax. With the eyes closed, let's take the um, four fingers and middle fingers to the bridge of the nose. Gently draw the fingers down the nose, over the cheekbones, and out toward the temples. We'll do that again. So the temp, let's <laughs> bring the fingers, sorry, to the third eye. Draw them down the nose over the cheekbones and to the temples. This time, start at the third eye, space between the eyebrows, pressing down the nose, and then draw the fingers lower to the space under the cheekbones, pressing them as you press them toward the outer edges of the face. And we'll do that again giving ourselves a gentle facial massage. This time starting at the third eye, pressing the hands, the fingers down the outside edges of the nose, all the way to the lower parts of the cheeks and then pressing out toward the edges of the face. And then starting here, let's gently massage the jawbone. Walking the fingers from the edges of the jawbone by the ears all the way to the chin and then walking them back. And now we'll reach the fingers toward the third eye space and this time press upward toward the forehead and then outward toward the temples, circling at the temples. When you're ready, gently release the arms down. Noticing how you feel. We have the power to comfort ourselves, to calm our minds, to relax our bodies, our muscles, and to make choices in life that align with our true values. Restorative yoga is, gives us an opportunity to relax the mind and listen to our inner voice, our inner wisdom.
getting to know ourselves so that we move forward from a place of groundedness, centeredness, and compassion. Let's take four more deep breaths here. When you're ready, we'll remove the block from or props from behind the hips. Roll onto the back. And we're going to come into a supported bridge posture. So if you have blocks, let's remove all of the props for a moment. <clears throat> if you have a block, I recommend setting it on the lowest setting and placing it, we'll place it under the hips. First, actually, let's, let's all get grounded for a moment, taking the block or your pillow onto your um, low belly. We have our back flat on the mat now and our feet firmly grounded. The feet are at hips distance, the knees pointing toward the sky. And let's just lift the toes for a moment and set them down. So we're really pressing the feet into the mat. And then we can gently begin to roll the tailbone up. We're not using any props yet. We're just bringing awareness to the low spine. And as you roll the tailbone up, you should notice the lumbar spine coming in contact with the mat. You also, if you have a prop on your low belly, you might have noticed that the low belly, the abdominal wall begins to engage. So from this position, we'll take a prop. It can be a book, block, or pillows, and gently slide it under the hips. So the height of this prop is really up to you. I'm using the low setting of the block, so it's probably about three or four inches off the earth. The feet are pressing into the mat. My hips are really heavy now relaxing into this block. And then I'm going to allow the arms to roll open, palms toward the sky. You can stay right here, or if you'd like a little ground, more of a grounding sensation, you can place a folded blanket over the low abdomen. This is a supported back bend here. Opening our spine, letting the hips be heavy, letting the shoulders be heavy. Beginning to draw awareness into the space of our lower chakras, our lower energetic centers. You might engage the root lock. This is the lock at the base of the pelvic floor. So engaging, gently engaging the muscles of the pelvic floor. Just experiment, see how it feels. getting to know our body with microscopic movements. The sacral chakra is the second chakra. This is at the base of the spine. And this is resting now, supported. This energy is related to our emotions. We 
it's associated with water, you might envision a body of water here What does that look like? Is the water still or is there movement on the surface? Is the water bounded by land? or does it appear infinite? Notice your sense of desire here related to the water. Do you desire to approach or engage with the water? Or is your experience about observation and remove from a distance? Wherever you are, enjoy the feeling of being near this beautiful body of water Breathing in the clean, fresh air and slowly exhaling. You might bring your thoughts to memories of water times you've been around or in the water and what that felt like. We'll take four more slow, deep breaths here. Finding a sense of peace and ease. Feeling support. Feeling calm. When you're ready, press down into the feet, gently, slowly lifting the hips and removing the block from beneath the hips. From here, remaining on our back, we're going to come to a supported bound angle pose. So to do this, we'll take two pillows, one on each side of the body. We'll bring the feet together at center and let the knees fall open toward the pillows. Now, if you're like me and it feels like maybe one pillow isn't enough to fully support your legs here, what I'm going to do is actually slide a block under each pillow for more support. If you don't have blocks, you can stack blankets on top of your pillows. The goal here is to feel the hips gently opening, but you also want to feel supported. So your muscles are not holding the legs open. They're gently allowing them to fall to the sides. If you have any stiffness or sensitivity now in the neck, you might take a blanket on a low setting and place it under the head. It's 
taking the time to set up your supports in a way that is totally comfortable. You should not feel any strain here. Actually, what I'm enjoying here is I've taken my blanket and it's folded on a pretty low setting <clears throat> under my head, but then I rolled it gently, like slightly at the bottom edge to give a little bit extra support right under my neck. So my head is falling onto the blanket. My neck is supported by the blanket. And I'm just going to take the hands here and bring them onto the belly. Let's take a deep breath in, drawing the breath into the belly. Slow breath out through the nose. Deep breath in. And a slow breath out. Allowing yourself to release any tension. Relaxing the eyes. Relaxing the face. Releasing the jaw. Feeling the neck supported by the earth or your props. Shoulders are supported. The back and hips rest on the earth. The legs are open and you might bring your awareness to the sensation of the legs coming in contact with the pillows. Feeling the hard earth beneath your back and the soft support of the pillows beneath your legs. And then noticing the feet touching one another. How does it feel to bring the feet together in this way? Can you bring your awareness all the way down to the feet, really observing the sensation of each toe touching its mate? And as we lie here, with each inhale, we breathe in fresh, nourishing air. With each exhale, can we soften and release a little bit more? Letting tension melt away. If 
finding comfort in the rhythm of our own breath. Looking toward our inner light, inner wisdom. That sense of the divine within each of us. Four more deep breaths here. Gently, gently, let's reach down toward the outer edges of the knees, drawing the knees together towards center and bringing the feet flat on the mat. From here, remove the props from your right side. Let the knees fall to the right and gently roll onto the right side, pausing here. And then we'll slowly press ourselves up, keeping the eyes closed or low toward the mat. We're going to prepare for a restorative heart opening posture. And to do this, we're going to use our bolster and pillow. And we're also going to use our blocks. So if you're missing any of these pieces, don't worry. You can create this shape using whatever you have. So the important thing here is we're going to be supporting the back and the head. The head will come up higher than the back. In addition, I like to support under the knees and I'm going to do that with my blocks, but you can also do that with rolled, a rolled blanket under the knees. Um, the important thing is just to have the knees slightly lifted off the earth. And then I also like just because I've got all these great props to use the blanket under the feet so that my feet rest on something soft. My hips are scooted all the way up to the soft support, whether it's bolster or stacked pillows. And then I'm gonna gently lower myself down. You might take another blanket nearby if you have one just for warmth. Now lower ourselves down here letting the head be lifted higher than the back. And then from here, since I have, since my um, back is lifted so high and my shoulders are high, this is how, well, it gives us the heart opening. I'm going to pad under my arm. So I'm actually gonna use my second blanket to pad under the arm on this side. And then I'll use a low pillow to pad under the other arm allowing the arms to spin, the palms to spin face up. So finding your comfortable restorative heart opening posture, make sure that every part of the body feels supported here. Use your props in any way that feels good. There's no um, magic to any one prop or the other. And we are each shaped so differently that it's important we respond to what our own body needs. So 
So settling in here, feeling the support. Maybe beginning to feel a sense of lightness and opening. Noticing the physical sensations of this posture. Scanning the body. Inhaling, nourishing breath. Exhaling, melting into the earth. Inhaling, a sense of lightness and buoyancy. Exhaling, grounding and rootedness. Inhaling toward the sky. Exhaling toward the earth. Maintaining your slow, deep breaths. If the mind begins to wander, gently call it back to the breath. Elongating the exhales. Slowing it down. Coming into the present moment. Feeling that balancing sense of the dualities common to our nature, masculine and feminine, grounding and reaching. Contracting and expanding. Recalling again our opening invocation. The importance of humility and devotion to our inner wisdom and to the wisdom within everybody else. And allowing this sense of the inner light of all beings 
to really give us a sense of connection, awe, and respect. We'll take four more deep inhales here. Softening and relaxing with every exhale. Inhaling lightness, buoyancy, expansion. Exhaling rootedness, connection, and grounding. As you're ready, we'll gently roll off of the props onto whichever side feels best. Pausing on our side, pausing for a moment with the eyes closed or the gaze low. Deep breath in, big sigh out. From here, let's gently press ourselves up. We're going to prepare for one more restorative pose. This will be a restorative inversion. If you have access to a wall that is clear of obstruction, then I recommend taking this inversion at the wall and I'll demonstrate that. If you do not have a wall available to you, um, you can simply take this inversion on your mat. Actually, I'll give you an option for an option for a wall and an option for no wall. So here's the wall option. You're going to scoot your hips all the way up to your wall and then just lay out the blanket or your mat so that your back and body will be supported. So from here with the hip against the wall, you'll begin to lower yourself down, turning so the legs can rise up the wall and the back is now on your mat or your support. The legs are fully supported by the wall. Your tailbone is in contact with the wall. Feet are about hips distance apart and the arms can open wide, come to your, your palms might come by the sides or you might rest your hands over the body, whatever feels best. If you're at the wall, stay here. If there's no wall accessible to you, you're going to make a prop mountain using all of your pillows and props, actually starting at the base with whatever is the most stable. So if you have blocks, you'll use them probably on their middle setting. 
And from there, you can use your bolster stacked on top of the blocks. And you might even use additional pillows um, depending on your height and leg length and what's comfortable for you to build your prop mountain. I'm going to just demonstrate right now with the two blocks and the bolster and then a blanket. And again, I like to have a blanket under the back here as well, just for some softness and warmth. So we'll bring the hips next to our bolster supports. We're going to lower the self down as we turn and then rest the legs on our supports. The knees are bent. And depending on how high you have your bolster mountain <laughs> will depend on the flexion of the hips. We're just trying to get a little bit of lift here in the legs. So you can do it like this or even rest your legs on a bed or a coffee table. Again, finding a place that's comfortable for the hands. You might take a cloth or pillow over the eyes moving toward the close of our practice, we can really start to turn inward, slowing down the breath. Wherever you are, let's draw a deep breath in. Imagine the breath coming from the feet, moving up the body, all the way to the crown of the head. And as you exhale, imagine sending that breath down through the body and out the soles of the feet. Let's do that again. Deep inhale, breathing in fresh, nourishing air, letting it go and relaxing. If you liked the facial massage that we did earlier in practice, this is a wonderful time to do that again. You can take the fingers to that space between the eyebrows, gently pressing down the length of the nose, over the cheekbones and toward the temples. Taking that same movement and with each time, you can move down the face, under the cheekbones. Toward the lips and away from the mouth. And you might massage the jaw. The chin. Even the mouth. Drawing the fingers again to the space of the third eye this time pressing upward toward the forehead, pressing outward toward the temples and making some gentle circles at the temples. Repeating this movement as many times as feels good.
You're welcome to stay in whatever inversion you have for the rest of practice. If you would like to transition to a different posture for Shavasana for our final resting pose, then let's take two more deep breaths here in our inversion. And then slowly with control, we'll lower the legs down, rolling onto one side and pausing. Eyes closed or the gaze low toward the ground. And then we'll gently press ourselves up and find our way into our resting pose, Shavasana. Set up whatever posture you feel is best for you. For me today, I am going to lie on my back with a bolster under my knees, one blanket under my back, and one under my feet. Slowly lowering down. Eyes closed. Letting the palms fall open by my sides. Taking a deep breath here, feeling a sense of gratitude and joy. And just sighing that out, relaxing and melting toward the earth. During our restorative practice today, we worked on releasing tension in the body, supporting ourselves using the earth and props in a way that allows our muscles to release tension We used pranayam or breath work and meditation to guide the mind toward the rhythms of the body as a way to release tension from the mind. Our restorative practice invites in space for expression as well as rest. And from this place, we can move into our lives with a feeling of peace, mindful of our own inner wisdom and inner light and respectful and humble toward the light within others. Shavasana.
Let's bring some small movement into the hands and feet. You might reach the arms overhead, pointing the toes and stretching the whole body on an inhale. And on the exhale, gently bending the knees, giving yourself a hug. Slowly release the head and roll onto your right side. Pausing here. And then gently pressing yourself up to a comfortable seat. Hands resting in the lap. Eyes can remain closed. We'll take a deep breath in, drawing the breath into the belly. And a slow breath out. Let's bring hands together at the heart in Anjali Mudra, a sign of respect. Bowing our heads in gratitude for this practice. and thinking of something in our lives that we feel grateful for in this moment. Dwelling in that sense of gratitude Deep inhale and a slow exhale. I would like to thank you for joining me in this practice today. Namaste.